So Abel, in terms of long-term accretive revenue generation associated with 5G, it seems pretty clear that this is going to flow from the use of cellular for digital transformation of enterprises and, and industrial sectors. So with what's happening around spectrum access liberalization, disaggregation of telecom systems, and a few other really large-scale trends, maybe you can give us an idea of what Airspan is doing to address this private network space. Totally. Uh, you know, this is a tremendous opportunity for, for ESP and the, the private networks market. Uh, I think there are three keys here for, for this booming market. First, as you mentioned, the affordable spectrum for private networks that we have seen in, for example, in, in many countries in, in Europe, in, in Japan, also in the US with CBRS. Also, the second uh, key uh, ingredient for this success on private networks is, is 5G, right? 5G, when we look at the, at the features, has many features designed for the industrial sector, right? And also Open RAN, right? Open RAN brings these, these flexibility of deployment, but also this extra intelligence that you can you know, extend to, to third party uh, software companies, for example, using this RAN intelligent controller. So we, we, are, we are receiving, I mean, uh, Private networks opportunity. We're receiving around, you know, an, an opportunity, you know, a day, uh, some weeks, like like asking for, you know, how to deploy a private network, you know, for a system integrator on a CBRS uh, market. Uh, we are we're working. I mean, with with numerous uh, partners, and we have announced several uh, private network deployments that we are very, you know, ex excited to to talk about. Uh, one of the you know unique cases we have of private networks is is GoGo, for example. That basically is an, an, an air to ground uh, 5G connectivity. Their, their, their target here is to provide a 5G experience inside the plane. Uh, and this is, I mean, this is a, a very you know, a unique use case because you have to think that we are providing 5G coverage from the ground to the airplane, right? So the antennas are focusing the sky, these highways that we have on the skies. And, and we are covering the full US and Canada. This is all done with open RAN. So that means that you have the, the radios, we're using sub six radios, massive MIMO, together with our software portfolio, the CU, the DU, right? And also that the, the most exciting part of this, of this project is the challenge, right? The R&D challenge we face on our software because we have to go beyond the specifications of 3GPP. <clears throat> for example, 3GPP has a, a certain cell range and, and, and a maximum speed for Doppler effect. So we went beyond these limits. So we can cover up to 300 kilometers altitude and we go even higher than 500 kilometers per hour, right? In, in, in the speed that is related with the Doppler. So, and also we announced, you know, with these milestones of, you know, a successful connectivity from, from a ground space station to, a, to an airplane. So yes, great, you know, great, uh, great project here and, and a lot of innovation moving forward. If we move to, to Europe, Europe is also of the big markets on private networks. We have Germany uh, that they have assigned, you know, sub six spectrum, 100 megahertz, and we are partnering with several system integrators. We announced, for example, Citicom, who have like a big project with a big research, uh, research institute in, in Germany. We're providing the full portfolio of radios, millimeter wave, sub six, indoor, outdoor, also uh, the full catalog of, of software, CUDU. And also we have, uh, you know, what else recently, Cocos, another system integrated there. And also we have, it's not a system integrator, it's more like a, like a service uh, service business. What they do is integrate their 5G network, it's called, they are called Umlaut. And they, they ask the customers to test their use case in their premises. And if they're successful, of course, they expand it, right, to their, to their customers. So, so yeah, a lot of, lot of activity in, in, in Europe. Also, you know, in the UK, uh, the government DCMS, is funding a lot of projects and we are part of many of them. You know, we are part of, you know, in, in, in Millbrook with connected cars. We're also part on the on the west of England doing like 5G logistics, connecting a, a port of Bristol. And, and also we are working in, in 5G and code about, you know, smart factories. And another big use case for us is CBRS, right? CBRS provides this, this, this bright, this wide uh, opportunity of, of different you know, different use cases. And one of them is private networks. And we have done some smart factories using CBRS frequency. And also what I mentioned <clears throat> before, uh, the GoGo uh, is, is, is also one of the, of these American private networks projects we are, we are, we are, we are, we are tackling. And we have seen such a big, uh, you know, 
demand on private networks that we decided to to create what we call a, a starter kit. A starter kit basically is uh, you know is our full solution. So you know radios, the software. Uh, but what we did is like created a network in the box. We created like and I mean we we partnered with a with a with a several core vendors, uh, you know, the servers, the, the synchronization, and we create this 5G uh, network in the box in order to, you know, introduce, you know, to accelerate the adoption of these open run 5G networks for private networks. So basically, you know, if, if, uh, if, uh, if a system that wants to start trialing 5G, we just, you know, they just get this starter kit and they have a 5G network that is already integrated. And this has been also a great success uh, for us. So you gave us an idea of some of the private networks projects that you're engaged in, and you mentioned just the sheer volume of, of inquiries you're getting about private networks. So what strikes me there is, you know, there's this need for any vendor, in this case Airspan, to kind of balance scale and replicability with the customization necessary to address each one of these different types of projects. So I'm just curious how you think about striking that balance and have you derived any key learnings from the projects that you have worked on that can apply forward as you continue to engage with different uh, vertical industries yes that's a very good question we i mean we are learning a lot with uh with the private networks uh market and if i could summarize the, the learnings maybe I, I will choose two learnings the first one will be integration uh, you know, integration is, is key for, for private networks. You have a, a big variety of, of, uh, of, of vendors, right? I mean, we, we already had, you know, a successful experience. I mean, I think we were one of the first was integrating our open brand solutions with all the run vendors and core networks and virtual infrastructures in, in Rakuten. So we are the front front on, on, on integration. Uh, we could take this experience on the private networks field. And what we see is that uh, now, um, on, the, on, the, on the private networks, uh, the system integrator is the one who selects a portfolio of vendors, right? And you have to, you have to work with, you know, between us in order to, to create this 5G network, right? So one of the things, for example, if we look at the, of the 5G core uh, networks, we have already tested. I will say we are in the numbers of, of 10 different 5G core uh, networks. We have announced publicly, for example, HP, <clears throat> Druid, MetaSeeds, but we have others that we, we will announce shortly. And this is and this is a key value for the system integrators and also for the for the end customers because you know it simplifies the work they have to do, right? It's like having a you know a, your USB and you connect it to any PC without worrying, you know, which type of PC you have, right? So so this integration in open run is something that we are we see a key, a, a great value. Uh, another second uh, lesson that we have learned is innovation. We believe that innovation on, on 5G is driven by private networks. Private networks are the guys who are looking to the, to the features, you know, from, from the future. They're the ones who are looking to, you know, the, the latest features from 3GPP or, or an alliance. Like, for example, we look at uh, release 16, release 17, right? So that's put a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pressure on our, in our R&D software engineers. Right, that that they have to really keep up with the with the needs of these markets, right? And we're talking about features like you know 5G and our positioning to locate to locate devices. For example, uh, everything related with low latency is very important for for factories, but also for connected vehicles. Uh, network slicing is also a, a feature that you know is, is is very important. So all these features are much more related with with software. Another part of the software that is becoming very important for private networks is, the, is this, this entity, the run intelligent controller. We have a, a lot of activities going there and, and, and testing you know, this new uh, interface, the issue that connects to third party applications to control your radio. So, so again, yeah, that will be the two learnings, integration and, and innovation. We believe that this is key and, and we at Espan, I mean, we are, we are great to, to have these, uh, these two uh, these two main key uh, values uh, adopted in our company. We are doing a lot of integration and, and our software uh, team is really capable to, to keep up with these new features. Private networks, obviously a red hot topic and, and something that's gonna have a long tail on it. So I appreciate you taking the time to take us through some of the projects Airspan is engaged in and really give us an idea of what this is going to mean for uh, collaboration within the telecom ecosystem and with new stakeholders. So thank you, Abel. Thank you, Sean.